Well, me and Susan met on the road in 1999, my first year with the Almond Brothers, and she was opening uh, shows. We met in New Orleans, and uh, with Double Trouble too. Absolutely, some Austin yeah, natives. Yeah, Tommy out. But you know, we we started dating. We got a house together, had some kids, <laughs> got we married. We did everything out of order. <laughs> we, we we toured with our solo bands together, but right from the beginning, I always thought it'd really be fun to start a band with her, like just her voice and her her thing and. But we were so busy doing our own thing, it took quite a while, and we wanted to get to know each other. It was easier to get married and have kids yeah. and put a band together. So, And musically, about, we were kind of in different places when yeah. we first met. I mean, he definitely has a lot more jazz influence than I do, so I had a lot of practicing to do before I came be in a band with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, ab about four or five years ago, um, I was getting to the point where I was ready to finish with the Almond Brothers and move on. I was getting ready to kind of put my solo band aside and start something else, and I just asked Susan if she was into starting a band, and we had watched the Mad Dogs and Englishmen uh, concert footage and, and movie, and just that traveling circus, we were like, that would be fun <laughs> if we're gonna do it. Maybe we should just see how many people we can fit in a bus. And, <laughs> and you know, we started with the two drum idea, and then later on we added the horns, and um, it's just been an amazing ride. I mean, we had high hopes from the beginning, but musically and um, just the, the hang and everything about it has is, is fully outrun our expectations. Yeah. So it's been an well, amazing Well, we started ride. with a great core of people. You know, it really all began when Derek was like, you know, I really want to try playing with J.J. Johnson. You know, he's somebody that he had heard with Doyle Bramhall years ago. And, and I was like, well, I've been playing with Falcon for a while, and he's so great, too, behind songs and a songwriter. So... We were like, well, let's bring them all down to the house and try them out. And we actually had Falcon on the kit playing, and we were playing something. We were messing around. And JJ had just flown in, and he came and sat at the kit next to him, and they instantly had a connection. Yeah. And that alone, I think, was one of the first big building blocks of this band. Like having the two of them and the connection that they had yeah. and the instant love they had for each other as well as the respect for the music and the songs. And they met on the drum kits. Like they, they literally the first did. time they ever, ever said hello was musically, <laughs> and it was right out of the gate. Like it really was magic from the first moment. And uh, there was just something about the musicality of it. We, we played with a lot of different drummers, and we tried multiple different drummers. You know, two drummer combinations. And it doesn't matter how good you are if if, if the concept isn't, you know, music first or song first. There's a, there's a lot of. Uh, and people can bow up really good musicians like yeah. who's who's drummer one who's drummer two well, those yeah, there's guys a lot of ego involved. it was so but conversational right out of the gate like they really just they listen to each other yeah. and just lock eyes they look at each other when they when they play it's a it's an amazing thing um that that really was when when that happened i think we both knew that we were on to something like that's that's special what they have and then and then kofi burbridge is kind of the just he's the amazing. unsung hero he's such an amazing musician and he never plays the same thing twice, no matter how good it is. <laughs> so, and he hears everything. Yeah, it's so. He knows it's, exactly what everyone's doing all the time, and you know he he is really inspiring. He's and he's such an unsung hero. He really is very subtle, but he's incredible. I mean, his capabilities are much more than people could even imagine. Yeah, those guys, and then and then once Tim LaFave stepped in, it was uh, he was kind of the missing piece because it, it's a tough gig for a bass player because. The, the rhythm is so solid that you have to be able to play bass, like bass bass, and not just be one of the choppy mm -hmm. six string players that are all over the map. But you also have to harmonically really hear because Kofi is, he can go anywhere and he, he likes to go anywhere. And Tim has really great ears, but when it's time to lay it down, he can really get down in the mud. So it's, uh, once, once we found him, I, I feel like that was the, that was the final piece. And, and with that core of the band, um, really, from night to night, there's a lot of magic and a lot of new territory explored, and it, it keeps it fresh for all of us. I mean, I, I have to be on my toes every night. And, and there's something about wanting to play something that inspires the other people on stage. Like, you, we really want to turn somebody's head. Somebody you played with for 15 years, play something where they're like, oh, I haven't heard that <laughs> before. So there's a lot of that going on in a musical way, not in a not in a showy way or a one-upsmanship. It's, it's really... Um, trying to find some new ground. So we feel fortunate. I mean, we 
Susan used to joke about it. She's like, thanks for letting me be in your band, guys. <laughs> we, but now we kind of all say it. We're like, we, we really appreciate it. being in this group. So. No, it's true. It's really special. And that's a great thing about this band, too, is everybody knows how lucky we are because we've all had so many different types of gigs and have been band leaders or maybe have been a sideman, but we've been through all different situations and we know how special it is when you're in it. You yeah. know, like every, we all talk about it and we kid about it, but actually we really truly love each other. Everybody in this band really cares about each other and would do anything for each other. And and, and, and that's special. And we're really, itself. you know, there's a lot of appreciation for the fact that we're getting to play the music that we want to play and be as esoteric as we want to or as down the middle as we want to. And people are still showing up. It's, we're kind of, uh, <laughs> we feel like we're getting away with something. <laughs> like we get to play, you know, hint at Miles Davis or Coltrane things and then Ray Charles and just all of our heroes we're getting to play that music that we love and and there's really no compromise with this group and we went into it knowing that usually that kind of limits your audience <laughs> and somehow it's actually working so we're well, I think we're, it's we're appreciative of that too. a lot of the different audiences together because there's a little bit of something for everybody mm -hmm. and also you know like Derek had his following I had my following so a lot of those people came out and We've actually had a lot of couples that said, well, you know, I used to follow you, and my husband used to follow Derek, and we met at your shows, and that's how we <laughs> mar got married. So I've, we've met so many people that have got married from coming to our shows. So it was kind of nice to know that, you know, you can bring people together in more than one way, you know. And, and actually, you know, I, I'm blown away by the diversity in the audience. A lot of times we'll have everyone from 5 to 95, you know, so it's really nice to see that it's not all one type of an audience you know it really seems to be speaking to all different types of people yeah. so that's really encouraging for me I, I really and, and you that. guys know that because the type of music you present on the show it's like absolutely real music actually does have an audience if you does, if you put yeah. it out there like absolutely. there's there's still people writing great songs and playing great music and it's it's not mainstream mainstream but it when people hear it they're like oh I like that it's like we have children I, all the time like I realize if they just listen to what their friends are listening to or what they're presented, then that's what they get into. But if you play them Sly Stone or Stevie Wonder or Led Zeppelin or whatever, Ray Charles, they actually really like it. Yeah. Like they, they'll put on the headphones and put on a Beatles record and like really get into it. And so we, mm -hmm. we feel like in some ways it's our duty to kind of present some of that music to maybe an audience that doesn't fully know it yet. Um, I remember early on with my solo band, we did a Sunhouse tune and uh, Dick Waterman came out after we we recorded a Sunhouse tune, and he came out and he he was like, I just want you to know, and we weren't selling many records, but I was able to give you know the the family a check because you did a Sunhouse tune. As you as you get bigger and your career blossoms, just remember that these heroes that you that you listen to and take from it actually matters when you play their music. Like it actually you're actually exposing people to this. So we keep that in mind too. We try to. We try to play tunes from people that we really love and 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 maybe want to shine some small light on, you know. Well, we basically needed a new record, <laughs> so it was time to get creative. And one of the fa my favorite things now is, you know, we have a studio behind our house, so we can go in the backyard and, and go to work and then go to the front yard and go home, <laughs> which yeah, is great. It's nice having it there. But really, this record started, um, we were getting ready to rehearse for a tour and we we had three or four days the band in the studio the beauty of the having the studio there is the rehearsal room can be a recording session like that and so we got in there and there were so many ideas from the last two or three years of touring floating around that um, the rehearsal just kind of turned into a songwriting session and then a, a day or so into it we realized that you know maybe we're making a record all of a sudden so we just started rolling tape and uh, two or three days later we you know, we were into a record, so it kind of it kind of shifted from tour rehearsal to let's make a record, and then some of the ideas were, uh, you Soundcheck. know, the, yeah, this band at Soundcheck, everyone everyone has it's coming from so many places. There's there's grooves and m melodic ideas that are always popping up, and we got into a habit of just recording them on your phone or whatever. If you if you hear the drummers and and Tim laying something down, like get your phone out and record that stuff. So we we. Uh, there was two or three of those that we really remembered. You're like, remember that sound check in Richmond about six months ago? And everyone immediately knew, oh, yeah, 
let's see if we can write a tune around that. And so there was two or three of, of the tunes started from those seeds. Yeah. Um, the tune. Uh, Let me get by. Was Kofi that was Kofi messing around the sound check. Head and we're like, that sounds like a hit. Yeah. That sounds like a song. Somewhere I read where you said that the, the record, the music is is a little more adventurous sonically. Yeah. And you also uh, made a comment which I thought was was funny about how it was kind of like hanging out on the bus, the way the record was was made. Yeah. It was very spontaneous in that sense, very loose. Absolutely. A lot of the you know a lot of the sessions were were late night. A lot of the like the the tunes don't know what it means, which uh, our drummer J.J. Johnson, Austin native, um, he he kept hearing this melody in his head, and he, he was just singing it. He was singing it to Kofi, and started writing some changes to it. Um, and we laid down this track, and it felt really good. And after after this big session all day, and then a, a cookout and a late night hang, maybe around midnight or one, everyone's back in the studio for some reason. <laughs> so we put a microphone in the middle of the room, this old 1950s RCA ribbon mic, and, and just had everybody around around the microphone. And uh, we just, we wrote lyrics to that tune, the chorus, and it was, it was this beautiful late night session. And uh, the track ended and everyone was just loose enough where they just kept singing and clapping and it just kept rolling. Like the song's over, but it sounds good. <laughs> and then, the, the next track on the tape just started up spontaneously, so we ended up using that on the record. It was just, it was just a happy accident. <laughs> it happened to be right in time, but there was, there was a lot of moments like that where it's just the band just hanging out and, and loose, and I, I feel like this record, you, you feel the personalities of the group much more than anything we've done. Because we, you know, we went into it with no expectations. We went into it, just follow the, follow the muse. Who, whoever's writing, whoever has an idea, then that's what we'll go with. We, d we didn't think about radio or any formatting or how long does a song need. The song's as long as it is. <laughs> That's what it is. It's better not to overthink these Yeah, so this one, we, we took all of that out of the equation. We happened to be between labels when we were doing it, so there was no adults in the room, which was nice. <laughs> there was like so half adults, but right. yeah. And having the studio there, I mean, there's this old, beautiful, vintage Neve console in there. Um, our engineer lives four doors away, so... We made things, him move. Yeah, yes. yeah we, we brought him down. We, we kind of guilted him into it. <laughs> yeah, but he's happy. We're killing the real estate in our neighborhood, just bringing musicians and people no, in. No, so great. <laughs> right. He can ride his bike to work. It's pretty He rides beautiful. his bike every day. But that makes the sessions really relaxed. You know, you're not watching the clock. It's just people feel like playing and hanging, and that's, that's what it is. Well, both of us were leaders, you know, obviously. So we both had kind of what we wanted to do in mind and of course songwriting and all these different things but one great thing about working with Derek is you know we both kind of come from a similar love of, of American music you know whether it's you know Willie Nelson or Ray Charles or you know blues or gospel music you know if it's Sam Cooke or Mahalia or Staples Street. so one thing that's great is when we do go ahead and write songs and you know we do have a nice common ground but it's great because it can go in two different places so I think this band is really unique that way, and, and I think one of the things that you keep in mind is, you know, we're all working together, and it's not like any one person is super in charge. I mean, we kind of, I'd, I'd have to say that the whole band, including myself, kind of look up to Derek as our leader, because he just naturally knows everybody's strengths and knows how to bring that out in people, and also he understands that, what he was saying kind of earlier, it's not about overthinking things. It's not about thinking about what other people want. It's about what does the music want and where does the music want to go and and he's really good at letting us do that and letting it breathe and and he really has a, a real I think something in mind for what this is and where we can go and that's not always easy to do you know and so I, th I think we really kind of look to him as and the future <laughs> of this band. Sorry honey, no pressure. I, you know I, I think I think some of the difference between my solo thing and, and Susan's and, and this, I think we've learned to surrender a little bit more to it all. You know, I, I think when you're doing your own thing, it's so easy just to just to do exactly what you want at all times and everything just kind of rolls that way. And that can be good, but I, I feel like the best music comes out of great collaborations and there's there's always a little give and take in that. And I, we've had to learn that and it's been it's been a great process, but I think we're better for it. I think there's mm -hmm. there's certainly an evolution um, that's happened just since this band has been together, and I, I feel like it's made me a better listener, musician. Um, I, I feel like Susan's a, a better 
singer, guitar player across the board, just from being around the musicians we are in this band. And I think everybody, as this thing gets better, I can feel everybody just kind of surrendering to it a little bit more. There's a lot of world-class musicians in this band that have been doing a lot of different things, and it, it takes a while to, uh, to give yourself to something. You know, the music business can be pretty ugly, and I think we've all been in situations where you get a little burnt, so you, people put up walls, and I, like as this band gets, there's more experience and there's more time on the road together, I can feel people just, they just, they're more in it fully, and, and that's, a, that's a unique thing. That's, that's what we're after, you know, we really want it to be a living, breathing band and not just a, a bunch of musicians on stage and mercenaries, you know. So. And that works on and off the stage, the whole totally, surrendering. Thing. Totally. You know, actually, Derek and I, I feel like our relationship as a couple has gotten a lot better being in a band together because now we can s sort of understand each other and where Absolutely. we're coming from a little bit more. Where when we were in our own worlds, we were kind of like ships in the night, never really on the same page. Yeah. And now we're on the same page because we're living, breathing together in this group and and our relationships within the band too have really grown. Like we really have a nice relationship with a lot of different people in the band and, and now that we have a few new members of the band too, it's just growing day yeah. by day and everybody is just incredible. I mean, it's, it's, really it's a great. Special it's great being able to be, I mean, because for me growing up, I was on the road at nine or 10 years old and even hearing the stories of my, my dad, you know, going AWOL to see the almonds at the Fillmore and just the whole family vibe of that, that thing. It's all, music and family has always been one and the same. And it's, it's, uh, so your band has always been an extended part of your family. It's not people you work with, it's family. You spend more time with your band a lot of times than you do with your family. Yeah. So it's nice being able to share the life experience together, be on the road together being surrounded by people you respect and enjoy being around. Um, it, it's, been a, it's been a great ride. I mean, that we, we feel lucky to, to be able to do it. Well, the ride's not over yet. That's for sure. So, you've got a good thing going. Just getting sure. into it doesn't it. always work out this way. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. No. People ask all the time, like in interviews, are like, so how can you be in a band with your wife? <laughs> like, I was like, well, you got to marry the right person first. <laughs> like, it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to be with somebody you like being around and, and, and you're into the same thing. I mean, what, what's better than getting to do what we do?